Hey guys, Youngblood with you and welcome to 3.11 Wave 1 PTU Access. Now there's going to be quite a few new things to show and talk about, so we'll start off with covering the new cargo decks and station layouts. Now first off, the days of having to run through an orbital station or a rest stop, hoping you can find logic in the layout, are kind of over. Now, the Wonka Vader approach that we've seen to deliver you to ships has now been applied inside the station as well. And what that really means is that you have several areas that are all accessed via these elevators as opposed to walking to the locations around the station. So, if you land at a station, you take the elevator to the ASOP terminal area where there's now six terminals for calling ships instead of two, so there's a lot less backup there. Um, but you also have a food vendor right there in the lobby area, as well as kind of that seating area with kind of the scenic overview. Now, this area is also where you have the easy habs, and this is where you will spawn if you log off and you come back into the game from here. Now, what's new, though, is you end up having a set of elevators, and that's going to be really your new internal transportation area. Now, once you call the elevator and get on, you're going to be provided with a few options. So if you're at a rest stop, you're likely going to have the Galleria as your only location, which is where you can go to get food and visit the shops to buy, you know, gear for your ships or for your person. Now, if you're at an orbital station like the Genie, Everest, or Tressler, you're going to have a secondary option for the cargo center, which is what's actually really new here. And that eventually should be applied to other locations like the R&Rs and the, uh, you know, Lagrange stations that are out there. Now, the cargo area is being built in for several different reasons, including having a place to sell cargo from your ship instead of needing to go down to places like Central Business District at Lorville, um, though there are not terminals that really work for buying and selling just yet. Um, additionally, the massive storage area that sticks off the exterior of the station means that you're going to have more quantity available for them to be able to bring ships into the game like the whole sea, not to mention the quantity of life or the quality of life, not having to get uh, you know a big chonker like the caterpillar down to the surface. Now the insides here are really impressive. You know, off to the right you end up having a main space with large stacks of shipping containers where you also get to see cranes that are hauling some of these items away into other locations in that area. Um, you also have employees who are yelling across the deck with a nice echo effect. Um, plenty of atmosphere sounds like people dropping wrenches and clanks and booms and stuff that makes you feel better about being there in that sound space. Um, you also have a maintenance area which takes you down a level, but there's not much to see there yet, just a closed and locked door. Now we do have quite a few areas that are currently restricted, so I'm not sure on their long-term plans, but based on the size of the cargo wings on the station, I would think that there is probably gonna be something like an internal tram system or something that could make sense as far as just transporting you across these areas if there's gameplay that justifies it. Um, this also seems like the place where you might see some black market dealings, and I think there's a lot of space here to make that you know, logical, where you're like tucking in and handing somebody that's contraband behind a box, or maybe you're paying off a cargo master or somebody that would let you, um, you know, hold something that you wouldn't be able to otherwise, you know, have available for sale there. You know, outside of that, the primary area here for the cargo boxes, you have almost a little commerce area labeled cargo services. And I believe the main deck is where you're going to be able to sell and buy commodities in later iterations. But for now, they're non-operational. Now, you can buy food and water and snacks there, which is a nice perk. Now, there is a nice rental station here, kind of like you see at some of the spaceports off to the side, and where you're able to rent, I think it's four ships currently, um, but cargo vessels like the Freelancer, which is actually a really great design idea to let you kind of get brought to a place like this, rent a ship, get a cargo mission, maybe buy commodities, and you complete whatever you're going for, and you repeat, hopefully enough to make a profit covering your rental. Now, also here is where you can, um, you know, there's a little store area where you can buy stuff that would help you with mining. So at least at Everest, you can get the Novikov suit and helmet along with the orbit and the cutting tool and the mining guns, um, plus some other articles of clothing. Now, I also see here a board that's displaying what looks like quantities, pricing, supply and demand. So while that isn't really working at this point, it's really just giving you a static image. Um, I don't think that's going to be ready for you know anything that we're doing now until we get this functionality from all such boards. So think about places like the Central Business District um, that we see at you know stations like Lorville and Arcorp and you know the such that really show the supply and demand around the system. <clears throat> Now, the area is off to a really great start, but I'm counting on more gameplay coming out of these areas, such as mission givers, uh, maybe some piracy and emergent gameplay threats that are going to be causing you situations to get engaged in, um, potentially boarding actions from the exterior, though the last two are obviously a longer shot out as far as development. Looking at the exterior of these is really just pretty impressive because their size is incredibly large. And I'm pretty certain there's gonna be the others that make this kind of pale in comparison. Like when you start talking about the large cargo stations that are gonna be found further out in space that are really designed for uh, you know, stocking up for interstellar transport. 
Now, design-wise, it's cool that you're able to see the cargo boxes, um, you know, that are interior from the exterior of the ship. Uh, and visually, it sells the point of what they're trying to accomplish, that this holds a lot of cargo. Though I do question design-wise how the, you know, that, that cargo is really going to be accessed. Is it something that's an actual item in the, you know, game that has to be moved? Um, you know, is there anything that they have to plan for it to be more real? Um, or if we're really just looking at kind of static exterior imagery, that's not really going to change. So to be clear, I'm not really advocating that for now, but I'm interested in that longer term vision. Now I am expecting the large security docks that are on this uh, station, um, the ones that were built in for Invictus that hold the Idrises and the Javelin, um, to be leveraged in the short term for some of the larger ships. Not in 311 yet, um, but when you start getting ships like the whole C, D, and E, when they come online, it would make sense to start putting them there. We know a Javelin can fit, so it seems like a logical move. Uh, I think some of that also depends a little bit on how that vision is planned out for loading cargo in the long term. You know, there's been discussions about using Argos to load up a whole series or potentially thrusters on the cargo boxes. Um, but I think at least for the immediate future, they may just say that you dock in security and then it takes a certain amount of time to load your ship. And that's been discussed more recently. And I would guess that comes online for all ships um, to have kind of a default loading time based on your SCU total that you're purchasing. Um, and maybe doing something like docking and going shopping in the Galleria, uh, maybe how you kill your time. So that's really what we have with these new cargo locations. I think they're very well designed and they offer a little bit of new gameplay, but let's just hope that comes um, online in time by the time we actually go to live, because I think having working cargo terminals here that allow us to sell selling cargo is a big deal. Uh, in the meantime, hopefully you enjoyed this first look, and I highly suggest you get out of here and check it out yourself. Um, stay tuned for a lot more coming in 3.11, and I appreciate y'all watching. Have yourselves a wonderful day, and take care.